Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So, as you might be able to tell, I did get my tattoos. Uh, so, I thought I'd show them off here. Oop, can't really see that one. So, <laughs> let me get into this good, awkward position for you guys. So, there's one. Sort of. Ah, the problem is, is like I have to twist the skin on my arm to spin around so you can see it. Um, oop, the other way. I want to twist even more. <laughs> there it is, sort of. You can kind of see the other card. So there it is. It's a jack of aces and ace of spades on my forearm, on the top of my forearm. Then I got a pair of dice underneath with snake eyes being rolled, but lucky sevens being on the side there. And that was nice. And then I got the 666 six, six on the inside of my bicep right there. And then I got the, uh, the Einstein quote on my forearm, uh, my forearm there on the inside. And of course, I got the pentagram on my right pack with the evil eye in the, the center of it. And the Hebrew symbols with uh, that read Leviathan on the outside. So those are my tattoos that I got so far. Um, yeah. Um... The only interesting thing is now I have to wear my watch on my right hand just while this heals because it does take uh, four weeks to heal completely. Uh, so I was actually really nervous going in to get them to an extent because I've never had a tattoo before. I'm like, well, well let's get four at once because I'm an idiot. <laughs> so I was in the chair for from three to eight. That's when we, no, we finished around 8.20, so it was like around 8.30. So I was in the chair for roughly maybe um, one, let's see, three to eight, so five, not quite five hours. I was in the chair for like four and a half hours. Getting all this done. Now, this one I was the most nervous about, and that's the one we started with, because apparently getting in on the inside of your bicep hurts a lot. But, <clears throat> it actually wasn't so bad. Um, and actually, I'm one of those people who can watch myself being tattooed. Like, I don't have to look away. For, you know, I didn't, I did look away for this one. Um, because I was, I was, didn't want to know when they were going in, but you kind of know. <laughs> um, but I did watch you know, them do, uh, her do the lettering and like the playing cards and stuff. I watched that because that was pretty cool. Um, but it wasn't so bad when I knew how much I had left of the tattoo. This one hurt a lot. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, because I, apparently it hurts. The pain that you feel is kind of proportional to how much muscle you have in that area. So I'm like, and apparently rib, ribs really hurt the tattoo. And unfortunately, I don't have very big pec muscles. So I'm really, so it was really kind of close to my ribs and it hurt a lot. <laughs> so that, um, so yeah. And also very quickly, as you get, progressively closer to the armpit, <laughs> it hurts. So you could, so it was kind of funny to track the pain as it goes from like kind of over here, which doesn't really hurt a lot, um, or up here where it doesn't really, or yeah, it didn't really kind of hurt over here, but as you get closer to like the, like down here, that hurt a lot. So it's kind of interesting to like track the pain. But the only, what gave me so much trouble about this one, which is so funny, 
Well, it's actually not funny, but this was the last one we did, so I'm already like out of patience. Um, and uh, so I, I uh, so yeah, it was tiring, and then also that I had my shirt off in the room. The room wasn't cold, but um, then on top of that, I'm kind of laying like kind of upside like an upside down tilt, so kind of feeling nauseous and then like which was weird because I don't really get nauseous but of course I hadn't like eaten that day so kind of like feeling like oh great and I'm nauseous I'm tired cold and I'm in pain <laughs> but it was worth it I like the way it came out so um but yeah overall like this one hurt didn't barely hurt at all like the, the playing card and everything so I, I quite enjoyed getting them. I have plans for more, but she recommends that I wait at least four weeks before I get another one. Mostly because it's kind of traumatizing. Because you get, you know, each, it's like, I forget what it is, three needles for, for lines, like to do the line work, I think they have three needles in the machine. And then to do the the coloring, which I only had this one colored because I only wanted this one colored. Um, that one had, I think the shading needle has like a 7 or some, or 11 or something like that. So, yeah, uh, 3 to 7 needles going into your skin at like 60 times a second. So, 60 to a godly amount of times per second. It was interesting. <laughs> But it's not quite an experience like it because it's not anything I could really compare it to. It definitely doesn't hurt as much as people think it does. Like when people describe it as like, oh my god, it hurts, you know, it hurts a lot. You're, you know, it's like, it's not that bad, but it's like this one hurt the worst, but like this one I was grimacing over. Like it was, I was like, you know, it, it, it this one caused me to grimace a little bit because it did kind of hurt. But this this one, these really didn't hurt too much. So, those are all the new tattoos. And, um, yeah, and then on Saturday I also had the, the date, which... Didn't quite, well, it, it was fun. We both had fun, but uh, she decided she's going to see other people. And uh, it happens. You know, you can't, you know, you can't hit the ball out of the park every single time. So, not that I've ever hit the ball out of the park. <laughs> Come to think of it, I've never hit the ball out of the park. That, so... But it happens. Um, so yeah, those uh, that was that was my adventure for the weekend. Um, oh yeah, I'm also having a Blanco Nine and Lancero, like I always do. So. Um, Yeah, so that's basically my just the weekend. I do plan on going back there to get my eyebrow pierced eventually, twice. I think I've just finally decided to definitely get my right one pierced twice. Oh, and I also got contacts. I'm not the color one. I just got like the prescription regular clear contacts to practice with because it's a lot harder than people make it out to be. Um, like. Did I get it? No. Did I get it? No. Did I get it? No. <laughs> and you're like trying to poke yourself in the eye and hold your eye lid open. It's... I'm kind of looking forward to colored ones because one, they look cool. And two, you can actually tell when you have them in. Because like now it's like, you know, I put the clear one in. I'm like, do I have it in? <laughs> but you can tell when you have it in when you, but like getting it out, you're like, you're like did I get it out? <laughs> I 
Now, but now you'll definitely be able to, like with colored one, you'll definitely be able to tell if you got it in or you got it out. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to that once we get, uh, I'm going back in a month to, to, uh, reassess that, uh, and to order the, the colored ones once I get, once we hit, once I, uh, get the, uh, once I sort this all out, like that one, and, um, Yeah, that's, oh yeah, I worked yesterday, which, every single time I go to that, that job, I'm like, do I have to go, do I have to go, do I have to go, like, if you wake up in the morning, you're like, or actually no, because I go in the afternoon, but I'm like, is it worth it? You know, it's one of those jobs where you, like, you dread every single time you go to, go to work, so it sucks. You know, it just like sucks all the fun out of just like your day. Uh, so yeah, it's not. I hate that job. The only reason why I'm there is to help out the owner, and that's it. So I'll make a little bit more extra cash to go on vacation. Um, but that's it. And, uh, yeah, I've just been kind of tooling around. I haven't played tennis in a while. I, I do want to play soon. I actually have a match coming up this Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Sunday morning, I'm playing against my doubles partner indoors, which I'm a much better indoor player than I am an outdoor player. So, looking forward to that. It's going to be tough, though. I think he's, he just... I think he just took the top spot in this in his conference as a player for his eight for out of the out of the kids who play in this league in his league he plays a club league I think he's the top player so I am not particularly looking forward well I am looking forward to playing him because it's always fun to play him because he's has such a variety in his game that it's like it's not boring. <laughs> it's not a boring match. And, uh, you know, I bring things to the table that he doesn't often see either. Like, like you never see a serve and volleyer, and that's kind of mostly my game style now. It's like, you never see a serve and volleyer anymore. The last big serve and volleyer that was ever on tour was uh, Patrick Raft or Pete Sampras. You know, so you don't even see him in the pro leagues anymore. So it's like, it's kind of old school so I am really looking forward to getting out there and and, uh, and uh, showing him some of the old school tricks that I have up my sleeve so <laughs> but I'm also actually really determined to beat him too so um, yeah definitely looking forward to that um, doing that uh, now, let me get into reading your comments. Um, and right now, I'm just watching a movie because, um, oh, jeez. Huh. Um, just watching a movie real quick. Yes, to by the time until I found my physics homework, and I'm going to bang that out. I got an essay to write. Kind of working on that movie. The good thing about the girl that I talked to that I went on the date with Saturday, it was fun because we were able to talk about some movies and um, and uh, things like that. So anyway, I did bounce some ideas of my movie to her, and she shot many of them down. <laughs> Um, because she's like, oh, well, if you do this, then this can happen, and then, you know, if you make this monster the way you're doing it, you're basically making an almost all-powerful monster, and, like, there's no chance that the Arcadians will survive, and your movie will be over in 30 minutes. This <laughs> is, like, yeah. So I had to write in some, uh, some weaknesses to the, to the 
to the monster and then so I have to create more of a variety in the, in the characters that I want in the movie so yeah so I'm looking forward to, to that um, and I have an idea for another movie too so which um, Um, which I'm looking forward to as well. Uh, and what I want to do with that one is I want to try to write the devil, like almost like a devil versus God movie or Satan versus God movie. And, uh, but I'm actually going to paint Satan as the actual, the, how Satan at least appears to me in the Bible, which is actually a very, to me, Satan is the protagonist in the Bible, depending on, um, so, I'm going to write him that, well, I'm going to write an, him as an anti-hero in the, in the book, and God as the actual antagonist. And try to illustrate how Satan is all welcoming. And uh... Now, if, if there's anybody new watching these, these, these videos, <laughs> I'm, I'm an atheist, and I don't believe in any of that. Any, I don't believe in Satan, I don't believe in God, I don't believe in Vishnu or magic underwear or whatever else other religions believe in. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, but at least the way the, the devil appears to me in the Bible is the protagonist. So writing him as an anti-hero in the movie should be interesting and it's cert certainly going to cause some controversy, especially around surrounding, you know, the painting God as, as a, as a, an evil entity. And the good news about, you know, my, my, um, cinema studies minor is that apparently I can get internships in production so I can learn how to produce movies and, and try to do things along that, those lines, which, would be interesting if I could ever be successful at doing that. Uh, I do plan. I don't think I'd ever. I don't think I. Not only would I never want to be a Steven Spielberg like direct. I mean, I want to have his prestige, but I would never want to do big Hollywood movies because those are. <clears throat> well. I'd want to be very. I, I'd. I'd want to have Steven Spielberg and Quentin Tarantino's style, or not style, I'd like to have, I wouldn't want Quentin Tarantino's style, I do, I, I do love Quentin Tarantino as a director, but I don't like, uh, I don't, wouldn't want exactly his style, um, but I'd, I'd want more along the lines of you to mesh Steven Spielberg and Quentin Tarantino together, kind of their style of movies, um, but I want more of Quentin Tarantino's selectiveness. I think, like, Quentin Tarantino has done, like, nine movies or eight movies. That's it. <laughs> um, so I don't plan on doing any, like, like, I, I, I want to do these, these three movies just for the story, just to tell the story. That's the only reason why I want to do a movie is to tell a story. And... <clears throat> So, yeah. Oh, and another big thing in the So, yeah. I just thought of something. Um, but, yeah, so that's what I want to do. And then the quick thing that I, I just thought of, that I just heard in the news, or not just heard in the news, uh, I heard about a while, you know, last week. Ron White is running for president. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but, you know, Ron White, the comedian, is running for president. He's running as an independent, which means he probably will never get elected. Um, <clears throat> which is fine with me, because I actually don't want him as president. He is a great guy. I, I think he's pretty funny. Um, though some of the things he said that he wants to do as president has kind of made me go, uh, yeah, I don't. 
uh, exactly support that. But I have a feeling the reason why he's saying those things because I have a feeling there's going to be a punchline coming, even though he says it's not. I have a feeling he's trying to parody a lot of, like, the Donald Trump campaigns and stuff like that. You know, so But, so that should be interesting. I'm still hoping, I'm still pulling from Bernie Sanders. Um, uh, so, that should be, that should be an interesting thing. But under reading your comments, so Rory, I see you changed your channel name again. <laughs> it's forever gonna be the running joke. Uh, he says, "Do you know how nice it was to come on here this morning and see a morning vlog? It was like the young dude that made my morning. Uh, yeah, well, I shot it the night before and I didn't decide to upload it till that morning." I did keep watching for an upload to come in last night, but finally had to close it off. Close it off mostly because I forgot to upload it last night. Yeah, and the night before. Uh, <clears throat> but I went to bed hoping you'd post something on Friday, and man, it was it ever a great start of my day. Yep, they gave me a whole new meaning to the term Good Friday. Oh, Mark, I saw that you sent me a oh, quick going off topic. Mark, I saw that you sent me a video uh, for um, for Voltaire's um, Candy Claws reading. I actually am a big fan of Voltaire. Uh, I think he's a great guy, actually. Believe it or not, if I were to do a cast list for the movie that I would be producing right now, I think he'd be one of the cast members because he is... Um, not only that, but because he's you know an animator himself and... and uh, and knows a lot of production things, so he'd be a good person to bounce ideas off of if I'm ever going to do a movie. And since he's also not a well-known actor, uh, I could operate on a small budget. <laughs> of course, we, of course, I have to finish the movie first. I'm getting ahead of myself, but everybody kind of dreams of an ideal cast for a movie that they would produce. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Voltaire, so I, I have seen that video already. Uh, um, well, I certainly hope your exam went well. But knowing you, I'm sure you have nothing to worry about as you're a good student. <laughs> good student, yeah, right. And to yourself, um, I am a semi-good student. As my professors say, you it's like, you, why? Well, I know you have the brains to do really well in your cl this class, but you don't show it. Um, I always run into the problems where if I'm not really interested in a subject, I, I don't really pay attention to it. Uh, or if I'm like, I'm sure if like all I had to do was go to physics, I'd love it. But unfortunately, with all the other classes and like the time constraints, like I don't like the last thing I want to do is, is go to another class or go to, but like this. Oh yeah, my oh yeah, this is the probability class. That one I just, you know, I missed a lot of classes in the beginning because of the car issues, and you know I'm kind of just being overwhelmed with work and stuff. So I don't really. I'm I'm just dropping the class like. I'm taking, I'm still a full-time student even if I drop the class. So, because I'm taking five classes and I only needed to take four because I'm stupid. And I'm like, oh yeah, I can take more than, a, I can do more work than a full-time student. I can work 30 hours a week. I can play tennis. I can do YouTube. I'm one of those people who has like, who has, doesn't have a really good grasp on how long a certain period of time is. Like, which is why I'm late to everything, and why sometimes videos don't get up, go up, is because I'll be like, 
oh yeah, I only need like 10 minutes to do this, I only need 5 minutes to go here, I just, uh, yeah, this, so uh, that, and then I'm like, no, this takes, no, it actually takes 15 minutes to go there, not 5 minutes, and this actually takes an hour, not freaking half hour, and <sighs> so, <sighs> I kind of fall into that trap a lot. But I'm kind of getting better with it as I kind of get older and, you know, realize, like, oh, yeah, I can't do all this shit anymore. Or I can't, I don't have time to do all this anymore. Or, like, this, you know, I can't, I can't juggle all this at once. <laughs> so, I think I'm going to resolve that, well, I do plan on taking easier classes next semester. I'm going to probably take a guitar class and a singing class. Because I'd like to learn to sing and I can... Some songs I can sing, I can sing proficiently. Like, if you set an average, and slightly above that, nowhere near proficient. So, yeah. So I'd like to learn to sing a little bit better and play guitar, just because also those will probably be easy ace, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so I'm a good student to an extent. I uh, just, the reason why I'm just suffering is because of the lack of time that I, I have. And I'm not wasting too much. I'm not doing, I, these vlogs are, don't take that much time. So, but, uh, so I'm not really spending like a significant amount of time on these vlogs. But it's more like work is <clears throat> kicking my butt and, and uh, things along those lines. So, yeah. But you got to make that money because of this. So, it's like you got to make money. Because I used to do a, I wasn't unemployed basically for a year. And, God, I'll never go back to that because that sucks. Um that sucks because I, I just made my living off tutoring money, which is great. You know, you make, you know, I'm making, well, last year, I, I think I boosted, I raised my rate this year to 25 an hour, but I was making 20 an hour last year. And I had like six clients, so I'm like, oh, $120 a week. Yeah, it's not bad, you know, for a college student, especially one that's, you know, double majoring and playing tennis and doing all that fun stuff. But... The the problem with that was is that when you when a bunch of clients cancel at once, all of a sudden you go and no client for some reason I would never get a week of just solid clients. You know, every client booked me that week. I'd only get like only like three. So I'm like, okay, well now I'm making sixty a week and gas is thirty and then you know, God knows what the other thirty will go to, probably food. So I'm like uh and yeah, it sucked. Um and uh, so I will never go back to being unemployed again. And now I'm like, okay, I want to make money. So I don't, I'm like, wait, if you if you ever do a year of being unemployed, you, and then you get a job, you're never going to let go of that job. You're going to constantly <coughs> try to work as much as you can because you don't, like, my thought is I don't want to fall back into that because that was like, I was somewhat like, we might, you know, I was unemployed also the year that my mother was in the hospital. So, like, I'm constantly, like, really low on money, really low on funds. I uh, also was dealing with that. So, like, money stress, you know, the, the mother, you know, mother being in the hospital stress. And then, you know, along those lines kind of sucked. So, I don't want to be in that position again. <laughs> And, uh, so, yeah. And, yeah, I can tutor myself to an extent, but it, it requires, um, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's tough to just, you know, with the time constraints to be able to, like, dedicate, you know, you know, the, the needed amount of time to each class. And he says, thank you for clarifying the monster concept for me a little bit better. Demon, demons and ghosts are, are real and 
uh, wait, uh, skipping lines. Thanks for clarifying the monster concept for me a little bit better, demons and ghosts. That should be real spine. That should be a real spine chilling goosebumps, thought provoking film. Because I believe, because, because I believe demons are real. And two ghosts and ghosts are two. I'm sure The Exorcist scared the hell out of most people who saw it, myself included. And you ever saw the HBO unedited version? I actually have not watched The Exorcist. I want to see it. Um, that that regular TV wouldn't air with all those scenes left in. It was even more scary. That'll make a Catholic want to keep a crucifix close by, especially if you're watching it alone. As for ghost movies, I can't recall too many of those I've seen. Is there a difference between a ghost and a spirit? In my mind, not really. Like a poltergeist. Uh, to me, I don't really believe in or subscribe into any of those stuff. Like, I'm so like, you know, I, you know. See, the thing is, it's, it's actually quite funny. Um, because I guess you can't, you know, you don't have to believe in God to believe in, in ghosts and spirits because. Um, but, like, to me, like, I'm always one of those people, like, unless you can prove it, um, you, you know, I don't really subscribe to it. And while the Ghost Hunter shows are very provocative, I actually don't think what they're actually doing is gathering good evidence. Mostly because those EM meters are, you know, measure electric fields, which people think, oh, that must be a ghost. I'm like, no. Actually, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab another cigar and put a shirt on because I'm cold. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so the problem with those are that electromagnetic fields can come from a variety of different things, including electrical circuits, um, and I believe even ones that are powered off. Even if there's no current flowing through the circuit, I think if you, to measure an electric field, you got to, you know, You can generate, a lot of things can generate an electromagnetic field, even circuits, even, you know, if you measure by a light switch, I believe that you'll register an electromagnetic field. Um, because basically all current traveling through wires generates an electric field, mm -hmm. uh, or an electromagnetic field. That's something I learned through physics. So, um, I just don't feel like they gather good data. Now, could that mean that ghosts exist? Yes. Do I think there's good data supporting it? No. Uh, would I love to gather, eventually try to gather good data? Sure. I, you know, if somebody gave me the opportunity, he's like, hey, why? Do you want to go ghost hunting? Um, I'd be like, sure, but I want to gather specific equipment. I want to set certain standards, and I want to set, like, see, that's the boring part. That's why nobody does this in films, is because, like, or, like, shows, because I'm like, you know, and that's some people's gripe with Mythbusters, and I think that's, uh, I mean, Mythbusters does a really good job, it, it, but they cut out a lot of what act, the actual science is. You know, they, you know, Mythbusters actually do multiple tests that more than one run, you know, of the test, but you only ever see one run of the test. Because people get bored. And um, so actual science is, does not make for great TV to an extent. And um, so setting those standards would put basically mean like, yeah, whatever information we get would be great data. 
but it would be quite a boring show. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to go out ghost, theoretically ghost hunting, if I could set, like, the standards for, you know, what, you know, to consider an actual, you know, set standards for measurement and, um, and, and those, and, and, and to, you know, to that extent. So, yeah. So that's why I don't really believe in ghosts, because there's really no good data out there for it. But could there be? I guess. But, I don't know. I haven't seen anything, like, in that regard. My nephew that I mentioned who saw a Nightmare Before Christmas with, he is a big horror movie buff. Uh, loves them. I did go back and Google that vacation movie that came out this summer and watched a few trailers. And while I didn't want to thumbs down the movie before I see it, it just didn't look like anything that, like I thought, I was hoping the visual, like what I was hoping the visual Chevy Chase vacation movie was. I thought that this was, sorry, I'm reading also at a distance. I don't have my contacts. I thought that this was going to be more of a family reunion sort of film, but it looks like it takes like a take on the life of Clark's son Rusty and his family. But I have been wrong about movies before, so I will have to see it before I render a final verdict. The how to string a, a, a rack demo sounds very interesting. I, I always wondered how that was done. So if you're able to show us sometime, I'd enjoy seeing it. Uh, yeah, like I said, the problem is like I, I kind of don't want to do it on my stringer because my stringer is a piece of shit. <laughs> um, be kind of curious if I sports authority would let me do a, a, a stringing, uh, you know, demonstrate how to string on that machine because then they, I guess they could also use it to teach others how to string. So that might be interesting. My, she, my boss will let me do that. As for my channel, I think anyone visiting it is going to be in for quite a shock because I've taken it, my team to a whole different level, and I do mean different. Those who are subscribers to my older, mainly cigar-based channel will find something a wee bit different, possibly head-scratching too, uh, as I am opening the door to another side of my life really, really seen or known about me, which might confuse or bother. Some, but oh well. And while it's not meant to be all about the darker side of who I am, but it's more of a random channel that shares a little bit more than just my love of cigars, which I will always have. My theme for those wishing to know what is Dark Rainbow Ro Romeo can be explained by going to my channel's description page, and I will still be making videos from time to time, as you can see. One of which was a still picture of a vacation I took to Universal Studios. And I was went to Disney World with my mom, my nephew, and his friend. Yeah, I, I saw a, uh, a, a few of those. It was pretty cool. It, good pictures. Um, I still plan on doing a video on Cigar Hangout, promoting your channel, as well as a shout out to for the Why I Told channel. This is just for anyone who, who may share the interests of tennis, movies, science, and cigars. And I hope your upcoming date will be both entertaining and a success. Unfortunately not, but it happens. You know, I don't blame, you know, her anyway. She was, she was a very, she was a very lovely young woman. And, uh, so wish her the best. I hope that you can make such an impression on her that you can blind her with your science. <laughs> I love that song. Uh, meaning your oh so charming self enough so that she finds you to be in her eyes Prince charming. Which I still can't imagine any girl not taking one look at you and her eyes not needing reinserting. Uh, trust me, I'm not that appealing. Um, don't sell yourself sure short too bait. <laughs> uh, you have within you a great gift and you are a wonderful, nice, good guy that is 
that is what the world needs more of guys like you there is a light that radiates you from you which when encountered would leave any person better thank you for your kind expression of concern for my mother yeah let me know you know let me know how you're doing it if you get and if you have any ideas of, of how i can help you out at all uh let me know um you know i'm kind of thinking of brain you know brainstorming ways off the top of my head of, you know, um, of ways to do that you know um I have a few ideas, and uh, um, yeah, if you need any help or like want to start a GoFundMe page, I'd certainly, uh, if you start a GoFundMe page or something like that, I'd certainly promote it as much as I could uh, to help you out because that is sucks, man. Um, like I said, you know, uh, you know, that kind of strikes a chord with me, you know, with, with what your mother's going through, because, you know, like I said, I, I nearly lost my mother um, back last November. Actually, actually, at this point in time, you know, I didn't really elaborate too much on the story, um, but my mother was in a coma for two weeks, and the doctor, at basically around this time last year, pulled us aside and basically said, you know, if we don't see improvement, you're going to have to really consider, uh, basically the doctor told us to get all of her affairs in order, um, because if she didn't improve, like today was a date that, um, they basically, I think today was the date they basically told us, you know, she's basically got, you know, a week, you know, you know, and if we don't see improvement, like, I think they told us like a week or two weeks or no, I, no, I think it was less time than that. I think that, yeah, I think they gave us a week. Uh, she basically said if, if she doesn't improve, like, within a week from now, um, you have to consider, you're going to have to consider, you know, pulling the plug and, um, And, um, yeah, that was, yeah, basically they, they, they told us that arranging, uh, you know, basically get ready to bury her, basically, you know, at that point, they basically said, you know, it doesn't get better within a week, start getting ready to, 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 to bury her and, and, um, so, and within three days of getting that news, she came out of the coma, so, or, or, or started to, to really improve. So, I was, yeah, I was, it was, it was like, it was almost like she heard that, and it was like, okay, time to, <laughs> time to get out of here, you know, time to, so, it was, Which was, in that situation, was tough because, you know, you know, I'm well over, you know, 18, you know, I was well over, you know, well into my adulthood at that point. So, you know, I was, you know, people were talking to me who didn't know my opinion on it. And I had, I had semi significant pull, or I had it, I had significant pull in the decision process, you know, me, my uncle, who was the power of attorney, and, and, um, you know, basically we went back and forth on that in discussing that, so that was kind of a long, like this week, this week last year was basically the worst time in my life, so, and um, so with what your mother's going through kind of really harkens back to that. And, um, and like I said, I lost my grandfather to lung cancer as well. So, of course, much, uh, a later stage. So, and, uh, so this is kind of, you know, what was what your mother's going through really strikes a chord with me 
on many levels. So I am really hoping that she's doing well. And like I said, if you need any help or even just somebody to talk to, I mean, you have my email. And uh, I always answer my emails. Unfortunately, the comments, you know, the the, the mailbox is not exact. Uh, the YouTube inbox kind of sucks. So like I said, probably the best way to get a hold of me is my my just email. And, and I respond to all emails that way. So, um, and he says, um, she was, she was to have surgery today, but has been postponed until next Tuesday due to be, being on blood thinners, which thankfully they caught just in time. So her stay in the hospital is going to be a long one this time, but our family is determined to do everything within our power to do all we can for the sake of my mother. I'll keep you posted, but in the meantime, know that I, I so appreciate your friendship and your vlogs that are a genuine day booster for me. Hope, hope that your test went exceedingly well. I didn't. <laughs> Rory. Yeah, like I said, like I said, man, if, if you need any help at, uh, at all, uh, let me know. If you need, or you just, you just need somebody to talk to, you know, like, like I said, my email, or if you have Skype or something else, Skype with you, if you need, if you need somebody to talk to at all um, with, you know, with what's going on, I'll be willing to do that. Um, because, you know, <clears throat> everybody in that situation needs somebody to talk to. And, um, because it, it, it's kind of, it's, it's horrible to go through that on your own. And, um, I'm thankful for the people that were around me when, I mean, this whole thing, like, that's why I'll always be thankful to my cousin and his girlfriend, uh, who were with me on the cigar, uh, on the, uh, Halloween live stream, because, I mean, it's not, it's not a great influence to go out drinking, but, um, it's just, you know, something to do to just take your mind off of it, you know? So, I mean, it wasn't, it's not good, but it was better than, you know, you, you just need somebody to talk to and to vent to and to, um, so if you're, if you need somebody to talk to or, or anything at all, just let me know. I, you know, I can do what I can. I mean, I, I so if you create a GoFundMe page, I mean, I, I can, we can try to do something like with that, like, um, <clears throat> I do plan on attempting another charity live stream in a couple months. Um, so, yeah. So definitely let me know if, if anything, if you if anything comes to mind, if you want to ever, you know, organize a charity uh, thing with me or uh, to help out. Definitely be willing to do that. So. Just let me know. And then you also left a comment on my blog on Paris attacks. The Paris attacks on the break of Paris. Uh, but at first, I'm going to quickly read um, Lollipop Valley. He says, "Well, we can all sympathize." Uh, Lollipop Valley says, "We can all sympathize with the victims of this horrible tragedy. Sadly, this is nothing you haven't heard heard before. And while my thoughts go out to the family and friends of those killed and." Yet another senseless, despicable act of inhumane and cowardly deeds. I'll be praying for for the the de the dead as well as those who as well as those who perpetrate such crimes in the name of some stupid ideology that will never be accepted by anyone. Yeah, that's <clears throat> it's such a it, it's it astonishes me <clears throat> this ideology. And I did a video on the Charlie Hebdo attack, which may be interesting to read. Uh, to to watch because I have very similar thoughts and uh, I showed you why right now Islam is the most dangerous religion out there uh, right now uh, so I definitely think giving that a watch would be a good thing 
but I'm also going to link something in the description down below, and it's a video from Thunderflip. It's quick, and he, you know, I'd love to actually talk to Thunderflip, and um, because I really think he's a great guy, and he and he takes a lot of crap. Um, but um. So it'd be, it'd be quite an interesting conversation if I were to, you know, to collab with them. And I, if I had a, you know, I'd love to actually do collabs, you know, recently and, you know, talk to him. But I'm going to link to his video in the description down below because I think he did a very, very good job and hit on a lot of good points. So I definitely recommend giving that a watch and, um, and send support over to him because he deals with a lot of shit. He deals with a lot of shit. Problem is, when you have views like myself and he does, um, and you publish them, and you publish them, you know, very openly, like, uh, and you have a big subscriber count, uh, you tend to get a lot of hate. And a lot of hate. And he gets, he gets some of the most hate I, uh, 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 I've ever seen. Uh, uh, <coughs> <coughs> on any of his videos. So, uh, I definitely recommend giving him a watch. And his channel will be linked in the description down below, or uh, his video will be linked in the description down below. And same thing with um, Lollipop Valley, your, your, your channel will be linked in the description down below. And then, or you left a, a comment on Yesterday's vlog, he says, this vlog shows a very real humanly concern for your fellow man, and whether or not you are an atheist or believer, it doesn't make your feelings any less important than one who does believe in God. And while I fear for those whose lives were taken so violently, and for the family and friends of those they leave behind, to grieve for them, and to suffer the confusion of yet unanswered questions, why? Until nations of the world come together to fight these terror groups as one united, in the cause to hunt down and destroy them once and for all, acts of disease will only continue and get worse. And if that means wiping out nations that are home to these subhuman lowlifes and, and brings about World War II, then if that's what it takes to stop this, then so be it. And what about the innocent civilians in those countries where terrorists live? In, in war, everybody, everyone's at risk, and it is the price of war. Lots of innocent people get killed, but so too are the victims of these acts of terrorism and killing indiscriminately for the for for their own stupid ideology is not acceptable and they are the ones most deserving of death and hell so two are the dictators of these rogue of the rogue nations. There are times when killing is acceptable when it means safeguarding their own people. To an extent I agree with you, to an extent I don't. Um like I don't believe in, in, in outright destroying countries because of them harbor well I don't believe in, in loss of, in, of innocent civilians no matter what the the take on that is uh, of course you can't prevent all innocent civilians from dying but it, there is certain measures that you can take to prevent it so I'm not saying outright destroy these countries because if you kill indiscriminately, to me, what makes you different than the terrorists? Um, because perspective matters. Uh, from our from our perspective, if we were to do that, I, it would. I mean, it wouldn't be good that we were doing it, but you know, we could understand that. You know, or to an extent, we could understand it to an extent but if you look at it from their perspective if you look if, at it from a perspective of the innocent people there while they know that there's people in the country that are doing bad things we would appear to be a, a very evil entity to them because we're indiscriminately killing them, believing them all to be
Harris. So we, to them, would look no better than they, than the people committing these acts. And, and while I do believe, I'm, I'm generally a pacifist in, in real life. And, and I'm generally a pacifist in that regard. I don't believe in war um, almost at all, except in very, very niche cases, like in World War II. I, I did support that. I, I did support um, that for many reasons, because sometimes the only solution to stopping atrocities now are like stopping atrocities like that needs stopping immediately. And I'm not saying that these don't need stopping immediately, but that's the only way to stop them immediately. And while I think that he, you know, to eliminate the Islamic state, that would need stopping immediately. So that would require um, military action. So I said, I'm on board with that. But that's not a permanent solution. Because, as we've seen, we, you know, we take out the Taliban and, uh, or the, you know, or Attorney Zen, we, we basically crippled the, you know, crippled Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. But the Islamic State popped up as a result. So it's not a question of, basically you play whack-a-mole with the military. So, you know, if you can imagine, you know, all these terrorist groups as being the moles and military being the, the, you know, the hammer that you're using to, to knock them down, you can play whack-a-mole to, to the end of time and you're not going to stop these terrorist groups from popping up. Um, because, you know, you knock down one and three more pop up. As we've seen, you knock down the Taliban, ISIS pops up. Or, um... The, the, the terrorist group in Africa, which, let me look that up real quick. Oh, Boko Haram, that's what it is. Um, or, you know, you knock down one, Boko Haram pops up, you know, ISIS pops up, you know, all that fun stuff. So, but to an extent, you need whack You need to play whack a mole. To an extent, but because you can't obviously just have them pop up and leave them there. So you need to knock them down. But you eventually need to unplug the machine to stop them from popping up. So you knock down the ones that pop up, but you need to have some secondary. Uh, you know, secondary attack to keep them from popping. And that's not going to be a military strike, because a military strike, you know, V for Vendetta had a very good quote on this. Uh, the, the, you know, um, the, the character V said, you know, ideas are bulletproof, and they are. You know, no matter no matter what you do, you cannot destroy an idea with violence. And so, while we can play whack-a-mole with the military and keep knocking them down, the military will never solve the issue at its core. Um, Because the issue is not even with people in the Middle East, because the issue is with the, you know, because there's people who support them who live in the United States. There's people who support them that live in Britain. There's a, you know, there's, you know, watch Thunderfoot's video. He elaborates on all the percentages of people who actually would support them in Britain. It's a scary percentage. And so while we play whack-a-mole with the military and knock down these individual groups. 
we, you know, we can't use the military as as a end solution. The only way we can end or we can make progress to end this terrorist group is, is or these terrorist groups from popping up is is killing the ideology. And we can't do that militarily because we can't. Like, that'd be like saying, okay, we got to kill all Muslims, or or kill all you know these people with these with these ideas, or not kill all these people, but no, kill all people who subscribe to this ideology because that would that would be genocide and that would be that would put us on on the same level as Hitler and that would put us along on the same level as as you know some of these you know horrible people and we don't want to do that because whilst we may think we're doing good Hitler thought he was doing good you know it's all perspective you know you know from the outs you know you know from the inside looking out we look at you know we, we seem to be doing good but from the outside looking in we appear to be very very horrible individuals so the only way to to de to destroy this group, and even then, you know, I mean, we tried to kill the Nazi ideology with military means only. To an extent, we had success. You know, we we took out Hitler and we took out, you know, a lot of the Nazis. But you still see Nazi factions, not to the same extent, but. You know, we still have the, the neo-Nazis that are, you know, in the Aryan Brotherhood who who are still attempting, you know, or, or still committing violence to that, to that, well, not to that extent, but we are still committing violence like that. So <clears throat> the only real way I feel to end this is to have the military knock out the groups, to knock out the groups that have shown up, that have, you know, knock out the moles that are, popped up and continue to pop up why we attempt to unplug the machine. So how do we plan on unplugging that machine? And the way I feel that we need to do that it is it's going to sound really corny, but education. Billy Connolly had a great joke, sort of a great joke. He said, don't never trust people who only have one book. Um, you know, and that's what, you know, maybe we should bomb them with books, <laughs> you know, and, um, and I think that, I mean, not, ex not exactly to that, not, ex not, ex not exactly that easy, but, you know, like, you need people like Thunderfoot, you know, myself and, and other, you know, logical you know, rational people, you know, like, like, uh, Colton Dusty and, and Jacqueline Glenn, you know, Matt Delahunty, Aaron Raw, uh, Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, Daniel Dennett, Christopher Hitchens, you know, uh, Lawrence Krauss, you know, you need people like that to continue to demolish them intellectually. And demolish the idea. Ideas are only damaged by other ideas. So you need so you need people to challenge those ideas with with other ideas and with other thought processes and, and with logic because. What we're really fighting is an idea. And if, if we don't, if, if we try the pure military action like we did in Iraq and Afghanistan, we will end up with the same result with another terrorist group, either better or worse than the one we have now, you know, um, and, 
and that's going to be a problem. So it's not really the it's not the Muslims that is a problem. It's the whole ideology itself that's the problem that gives rise to these this this thing. And, and like I said, the, an, an idea is bulletproof. Or, and um, so, well, I understand where you're coming from. I disagree with you in that regard. I don't think, you know, we can play whack-a-mole to the end of time, but, you know, it's going to be an infinite series of whack-a-mole, you know. And then it's not until we unplug the machine by destroying the idea by using, you know, reason and, and, and other ideas, will we ever succeed? So, and, and, you know, to say that, you know, I see where you're coming from, but the, 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 the loss of life will, you know, like I said, you know, if we're, that would be basically outright genocide and that would not make us any better. You know, it, it would look better, you know, it would, you know, like I said, it's perspective. It, it, it looks good, you know, it might, or it, I mean, it'd be, be horrible and we think it's horrible, but you think it would be, it sound more reasonable to us, but to, for them, it would seem incredibly, incredibly uh, horrible. So, so my whole, you know, and I do, but I agree with you, you know, the world needs to, it, when I say the world needs to come together, I think we need to come together in recognizing the actual problem, which we don't, you know, we, you know, the world may come together and go, oh, the Islamic State is a bad guy, let's destroy them. That's great. You know, we, we there's a, you know, we agreed on one enemy, but that's not our, we're only attacking a, you know, it, you know, to use a, you know, a, a war kind of um, analogy, you know, we're, we're just destroying soldiers, you know, you know, but, you know, we, we've identified the soldiers that are causing the problem, but we're not to translate this over to like to World War Two, you know, it'd be like us identifying like, oh, so these soldiers are the, causing all these problems. Let's kill all the soldiers. It's it's great, but we haven't realized that why these soldiers are popping up is because of the government. Whereas in this case, the government would be this idea. So. And those, and that's what's cranking out the soldiers. So, you know, you know, the world has recognized. Oh, yeah, the Islamic State is is the bad guy. I'm like, yeah, but they're just the, yeah, they're the bad guy, but they're only like the grunts of of the of this of this force that we that we that's the actual bad guy, and the bad guy is the this idea. And like I said, you know, idea, you know, we can't destroy ideas with bullets. We need, we need other ideas to destroy them. And um, so, um, yeah. So, so until we identify that it's an, it's it's an idea that we're fighting, and not a group of people that we're fighting. And until the world can wrap their minds around that, we're not going to solve this problem. And it's incredibly frustrating for me and for other people who realize this, like Thunderfoot realizes this. Thunderfoot realizes this. Um, and, um, and, and others do as well. But no government has yet to identify this as a problem. And to an extent, it's our fault because we have grown accustomed to this idea that 
that we're so quick to call people racist um, and things like that. Like, like I once said this and, and was called a Nazi because I said all these, you know, because you know, Muslim, you know, Islam is the is the most dangerous religion, and and because um, uh, you know we have so many people who just will go, you know. Oh, but no, this, you know, this is, you know, it's not all these people, you know, it's not this idea that's the problem, it's these people that the problem are like, you know, uh, you know, because they want to, they don't want to seem, you know, um, incredibly, uh, or, you know, the Sam Harris and Bill, the Sam Harris, Bill Maher and Ben Affleck thing, that is is the problem you know people on the left going oh no 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 it's 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 just a few bad eggs it's a few bad eggs a few bad eggs i'm like no it's a it's a very very bad idea that people are avoiding addressing like no it, it, no religion is not bad religion is not bad at all it's 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 just a few bad eggs that take this religious idea to an extreme i'm like no but this religion is the breeding ground of those people if you destroy the breeding ground of these people, you will, or the breeding ground of, you know, religion is the breeding ground of, of, the, of the terrorists. If you destroy the, the breeding ground, you're going to stop the terrorists. You know, we, you know that's, that's another good analogy. It's like, it's like, yeah, we can keep destroying the terrorists, but until we destroy the breeding ground of, of these terrorists, which is religion, which is this idea, we're not going to solve the problem. And these people who want to protect this idea for for some strange reason, thinking that oh no, it's, it can't be, you know, it's not that bad. Religion is not a bad thing, because they're afraid of uh, 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 of of seeming like the bad guy or not seeming like the bad guy, but like, um, but basically, uh, it, it is too much of this uh, this 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 live and let live on the on the on the on the left, you know. Because people think of, of of religion as like a group of people, and it's not. Religion in itself is an idea, and 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 hating an idea is not the same as hating the people involved in the with the idea. So, like I always say, I hate religion. That doesn't mean I hate all people who are religious. Uh, so, but people th seem to think of when I say I hate religion, I hate all religious people. Like, no, I don't. You know, you know, there's there's some there's some religious people who I, I quite you know enjoy talking to. You know, my my mother to an extent is religious. My you know my uncle and all my you know my family. I hate religion. I don't hate them. You know, and same thing. So it, it's just it's a whole it, you know it's a clusterfuck of of uh, of just just. A whole bunch of of bad ideas that are causing this problem, and until we can destroy these ideas, we're never going to solve it. And until we can identify, you know, first we got that one idea, like uh, uh, of of people not, you know, of hating ideas, and that doesn't mean hating the people. Until we get destroy that idea, we're not going to then identify this idea as the root of the problem of the terrorism. So, um, so, yeah, that's, that's my whole spiel on, on, on that. And I still see it. I still see people going, oh, no, it's, it's not, you know, it's not Islam's fault. It's not the, it's not a religious problem. Like, yes, it is. Like, the, like religion is the breeding ground for this idea, you know. You know, that's I saw this really funny. I I, I mean I laughed you know, at this and it's like, you know, uh, somebody posted it's like, um, you know, terrorist attack. And, you know, we don't know who it committed it, but it, I'm be willing to bet it's not atheists. And you know, I think we can scratch atheists off the page. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. Uh, um, 
because I have not seen a really good example of atheist terrorism. Um, you know, you said religion is the breeding ground of all evil. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's why, that's why, like I said, people like Richard Dawkins and, um, and, and Sam Harris and Chris, and Christopher Hitchens and Thunderfoot and, um, And um, and all them that they're, you know, that's why they're my heroes because they'll stand up and they'll say what needs to be said, no matter what uh, backlash that they take, you know, for it. And that's why you know, and we need more people like them out there. So, and that's why we need to all as like you know, non-believers and uh, to speak up against it, you know, speak up, uh, speak out against religion. Like it, it's now, I feel it's like at every atheist job to, to, to challenge religion because religion is, you know, the root cause of this and we can't be afraid for, uh, 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 of, uh, of backlash for it because our, our fear of backlash is what's positive, is what's allowing religion to exist as a breeding ground for these bad ideas. So, yeah, that's a long-winded rant on that. Um, and then I got another comment on... On another video, somewhere, is it somewhere? Somewhere. Give me one second. I can pull this comment up. But. What are you guys, what are your thoughts on this? Like, oh wait, shoot. Cash fell. Um, Uh, not that one.
see. Oh, yep. So. Uh, Rory, you, oh yeah, Rory, you left a comment on my video of of, um, on total tutoring, uh, he says, yeah, that sounds, that, that really sounds fun, but you know what most people would do when they see that? Say, see ya, I, uh, uh, and you'd have a serious, you'd have to be a serious math lover to give a damn about such an equation. I am neither a math lover or give a damn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some, some of these, what video was that? Oh, that was a simplifying that, yeah. Yeah, the problem with that is that I see that a lot in schools, and that annoys me. So, like, I, I see, like, an issue with that, because that's something that they should teach about, because that's a, a very common trap to fall into, but they don't. So, yeah, that's uh, my issue with that. And um, so yeah, that's been basically the, the gist of my day. I'm gonna be doing some physics homework soon, uh, and uh, that's basically it. Um, so yeah, I'm getting together with my cousins tonight, and um, but yeah, I, I, it, it's it's just a, a, you know like I say, you know, sorry for getting so you know deep into it today. Um, but, yeah, I'm ending this cigar, it's not that great. Mm -hmm. Giving a pain in the neck. And I'm running low on cigars. I have, like, four, five left, or oh, six left, including this one. So I'm going to need to stock up one more soon. Uh, I'm probably going to buy a box of the Avo Classics Pyramid. Uh, because I haven't smoked one of those in a long time, and like I said, it's probably my favorite cigar. So, looking forward to doing that. And, um, but until then, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.